Hey everybody, Jeff here uh, with another video. I wanted to review a part that I picked up for the SLC. Uh, I've been working on the controls, the dash controls, and um, building an HMI screen that's gonna fit nicely on a, um, a Android, <coughs> um, is it the uh, Android Auto head unit that I'm building. Uh, and I really wanted to control all of the HVAC system, door, actuators, everything um, kind of from an HMI instead of, uh, you know, push buttons and knobs and everything in there. So um, working on that on the side. And then also <clears throat> one of the one of the things uh, I needed to, to determine was how to correctly control the temperature um, and the fan speed and everything. So, you know, fan speed's pretty easy. Um, uh, the temperature heater control valves, I uh, was reading a lot, um, about what other people have done with the SLC and, and trying to, um, determine if that would work, uh, how I could get that to work digitally. Um, but what I come up with, uh, what I came up with is, um, a different type of heater control valve. We'll take a look at here. <clears throat> and I think it might be a pretty good solution. Um, but I just got it today. I uh, just came in. It was $13, uh, $14 on Amazon. And this is a factory Ford part, um, which uh, is um, pretty good, readily available, uh, pretty cheap compared to some of the other controlled um, heater control valves that would be controlled via cable or um uh, let's see, there's some potentiometer controlled units that are a hundred and something bucks, 150 bucks or so, um, maybe a hundred dollars, but this is significantly cheaper and I wanted to just buy one and, and see how it worked. Um, I do know that it's a, or I did know that it was a two wire solenoid actuated valve, um, which is perfect for, um, you know, what I need. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, is control it with PWM. And so what I determined, um, was that these solenoids operated a low frequency PWM, say uh, maybe about one hertz. And um, what it does is um, <clears throat> it's got a four port system, which will work nice with the LS. So it's got a bypass, so you're not going to ever block flow to the engine, which is important. Um, but heated uh, coolant comes in here through this port um, from the engine and will in the non-energized state of the solenoid, if it's totally off like it is right now, it's going to allow fluid to flow through the heater core. Uh, fluid will then return from the heater core here and back to the engine here. Um, if it's fully energized, the solenoid valve is going to close off this port, not allowing heated uh, coolant to flow through the heater core, and it's going to um, bypass it through here back to the engine. Um, so I guess the important things here are that uh, it is a normally open valve, meaning it's going to um, normally flow heated coolant uh, via a spring return solenoid uh, to the to the heater core. So if it ever fails um, electronically, you're going to get heat in the cabin through the blowers at all times. Um, that would be a I mean, telltale sign that that this thing failed, which, uh, you know, instead of being cold all the time, you'd be hot all the time. But either way, uh, that doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm going to control this thing via PWM at a low frequency and uh, we'll turn it on to 100% duty cycle if I want the air conditioner and then we'll back it off uh, if I want heat. Um, but one thing I want to do is definitely uh, take this thing apart and just see electronically what's going on here, if there's any type of um, signal buffering or anything. Uh, so we'll take this apart and we'll see what's inside. <clears throat> so there's just four screws holding on the cover of the solenoid inductor. And we'll just remove those. And we'll see how this thing comes apart. Pretty easy there. Okay. That's pretty simple. It's got a seal at the top. Um, that's pretty nice. Ah, and the whole coil just comes right off. Two locator pins. 
easy enough. And it's got a pa uh, capacitor here, which is good, but it does not have a diode. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I will probably add a flyback diode here um, in parallel to the capacitor. And that'll just keep any sharp voltage spikes uh, from, uh, uh, from tearing up any of the electronic circuitry. Um, when you quickly disconnect an inductive load from a relay or something, um, at 12 volts, it could probably spike to like 900 volts with the energy stored in the actual coil itself uh, needs to be dissipated. So a flyback diode is a diode that keeps that energy circulating through the coil until it dies down. Um, pretty simple. So yeah, this thing is pretty simple there. Plenty of room in there to add that flyback diode too. So that's really nice. And it's just a spring return valve. Well sealed, it looks like. Nice fat O-rings. So it's got a sealing surface there. And the rubber O-ring here is going to seal up to that. Um, so when this thing is spring returned and open, it looks like fluid comes in here and travels um, in the up upwards direction here and then through the uh, through the cavity and then out this port. Um, so when the coil is energized, it's going to press this into the down position and seal everything up. Uh, it just has a little bit of a, got a diaphragm seal here. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, we'll put this thing back together and uh, maybe test it out with a little PWM controller that I have. Uh, controlled from the computer. I won't need the flyback diode on it for that since I already have one on the, the setup. Pretty well made. Looks like it'll last a while. The other thing that I noticed here, uh, just taking this thing apart, um, is it has... <clears throat> a weep built into it right here, uh, meaning if that seal goes bad, it's going to drip water through uh, the weep here. And um, you'll have just kind of like a water pump, you know that the, the seal is bad and, and it's time to replace the valve. Um, so lots of indicators that this thing has failed. I will probably, I like the fact that it's all one unit. Um, I am probably going to mount this on a bulkhead uh, going into the interior. I'm going to cut these legs off since uh, you know I don't have the car that this was made for, obviously. So I'll cut this off, and then I have a nice you know uh, wide mounting plate that I can put several screws through in different locations to hold this thing in place, and then you know run the lines. So I feel like this is a pretty pretty great unit for 13 bucks. Um, I have a computer piece of software here written um, that I can control this thing from and a little driver here. So <clears throat> go ahead and hook this thing up. We'll set that there. Power supply. Ah. I have an LED indicating when this thing is cutting on and off, if you can't hear it, uh, at various duty cycles. So it seems to be working really well, and this is probably, uh, this will probably be what I go with. Uh, for the heater control valve. And thanks for watching.